Sri Ram on the history and compositions of three temples along the river Kaveri, Kulitalai, Thiruvat Poki, and Thiringoi Malai. He is being accompanied by Vivek Sadashivam to give vocal support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, DC. Thank you, Vani Mahal, for having invited me to give this talk. And thank you all for being here today for this presentation. In the story of uh, the three temples along the Akanda Kaveri, it, it, how it started off in my life is, Urna uh, Musuri Subramanya, I mean, Peranana Esti Agarajan, he sent me a set of recordings of uh, Musri Subramaniyar. So, in that, there is a concert where Musri has sung Pahimam Ratna Chalanayaka of Muthuswami Dikshitar in, in the Raga Mukhari. It did something to me when I heard it, and then I heard it again, and I have been continuously hearing that song again and again and again. Of course, I was very familiar with the lyrics of Muthuswami Dikshitar. But I went back to the book once again to see, you know, what this composition was all about. The uh, Dikshitar Skriti, Pahimam Ratna Chalanayaka, became a kind of a, and particularly Musiri's uh, render, rendering of that composition, became a kind of a spiritual call. It just kept getting louder and louder and louder. And uh, I began to ask myself when I will go to Thiruvat Poki and see the temple and uh, uh, witness the glory of that shrine based on that composition. This was the only reason. And then one day I happened to be in BHCL Trichy and my work got over early and I still had half a day. And I took permission from BHCL and I said I would like to go and see Thiruvat Poki by myself. So I was all alone. The driver took me to Thiruvat Poki. And then I did not realize what an arduous climb it is to go up to the top. I had read about it. I knew that there is an arduous climb that is required to reach the top of this particular temple. But uh, I did not anticipate that it will be that tough. And what was even more difficult was that that entire place is full of monkeys, most violent monkeys. So the moment you take the first step, Purvali, Sugriva and Sandapot and Varamari, two of them came rolling down, biting and fighting each other and then they fought all around me and I was terrified. Then there was an elderly lady who said, Nangala, you So that is how I started the climb. I went up. Then I went to the Arala Keshi. Even now I feel very emotional when I think of it. That uh, shrine to the goddess Arala Keshi, Dikshita says, Mohaja Arala Keshi Varadhava in that particular composition, all by herself with such a beatific smile and surrounded by monkeys. Those monkeys are going all around the sanctum, the sub, you know, the Mukhamantapam, Ardhamantapam, everything, and she is so happy with all her children. And just me and the goddess for some time. And then first question was, That is what I asked. Of course, I did not get a reply. And then I climbed up the final set of steps and reached the top, full of tears. Somehow it was a very emotional experience for me to be at, uh, at Thiruvat Poki. And uh, I had learned the lyrics of the song and I had learned it in a very rudimentary fashion. So I sang it to myself over there. And then I came down again. That was it. And then I later, I went to Kulitalai, much later. But that, whatever that experience was at, Pahim, at, at Ratnagiri or Thiruvat Poki, Thir Kulitalai was yet another temple. But Thiruvat Poki was very special. And I, Sharda and I then, you know, I was very keen that we should go take a heritage tour. We should take people along with us and go. And we planned a heritage tour. I think it was sometime in 2018. Was it in 18? Yes. Yeah, in 18. And Vivek, Vivek's family and I, we go back a long way. His grandfather taught me music in Calcutta. His father, Sadashivam Revati, his mother, they are all here. I have known them from the time when they were newly weds in Calcutta. And Vivek was not there at that time. And they come from a great Dikshitar Parampara. So I wanted Vivek to come with us to sing. Vivek came, he sang the compositions. And uh, he not only sang the compositions, he helped people climb up. More importantly, he helped people climb down. 
all that happened and uh, so it was a wonderful experience we were around 18 to 20 of us if i am not mistaken and i will tell you more about that tour as we go along in this presentation so the three temples are across a band of the river kaveri somewhere between karur and trichy and at this particular location the river is preparing itself to become a delta so it is widening and it becomes very broad at this particular point and it has got a very peaceful flow it is not um, after some distance it will divide into kolidam and kol kolidam and kaveri and then it will form sri rangam then it will go to trichy and from there divide more and more and more eventually reaching the delta region but here it's a very broad and very peaceful river so that is why it is called the akhanda kaveri and it is also extraordinarily scenic and beautiful full of greenery and uh, full of fields paddy fields and small villages along the way the i came to this this location only because of muthuswami dikshitar but later as i began to research the temples more i realized that there was a greater compositional history to it and that is how i structured the heritage tour by itself so as you can see those two red these three red points they indicate to you there are two on the southern bank of the kaveri one is thiruvattpoki the other is kulitalai and the one is on the northern bank and that is thiri ingoimalai two of them are on the hill to one of them is on the plains that is kulitalai is in the plains and the other two are on top of hills so shiva malai as kamala murthy would often say in her harikatha muruganukkum perumalukkum mattum mala kadaiyadu shiva malai und so there are hill top shrines to shiva also and this is an indication of that so they are as i said two are on this side kulitalai and ayyar malai or tiruvattpoki the other side is thiri ingoimalai the the tiruvattpoki is the tallest thiri ingoimalai is a little shorter and kulitalai originally kulitalai originally was a depression so you can imagine that there was a depression and there were two hills now the local tradition is that kalai kadambar madhiya shokeshar andi venginadar this is in one day you are supposed to complete all the three temples so in the morning you are supposed to go to kadambar kovil kadamban thurai or kadamba vaneshwarar kovil which is kulitalai and then in the afternoon you are supposed to go to madhiya shokeshar that is ratnachaleshwarar who is on ratnagiri or ayyar malai or tiruvattpoki as it is known and in the evening andi thiri ingoi malai la irukra maragadachaleshwarar or venginadar these are the three temples that you are supposed to complete in the course of one day we did not do it in one day we did it in two days but the the it, the, it makes great sense to complete it in one day and i'll tell you why as we go along so we begin with kulitalai kulitalai is around 45 kilometers from trichy on the karur route close to musiri and uh, this has got a temple to kadamba vaneshwarar who is shiva over here and it's a very small temple one gopuram one entry mandapam which you can see then there is an ardha mandapam there are two circumambulatory corridors one is outside and one is inside one is inside the sanctum itself it's a very small temple and it faces north and from here the river kaveri is very close by it is on the northern side of the uh, uh, north of the temple and when you go inside you worship this is the entrance passage way and then when you enter the temple it's a currently the temple as it exists is very vijayanagar and nayak so it is the uh, how shall i put it 14th century onwards construction but we know from the tevarams that it has existed from the time of upper because upper tirunavakkara sapirman has you know has dedicated a full set of 10 verses or tevaram to this particular temple this is kadamba vaneshwara the the very interesting thing about this particular temple is that the saptamatas are behind as you can see in the sanctum itself I, this is not a very clear photograph and this is taken from the temple's facebook site but you can see that the seven mothers are behind him it is said that the asura dhumra lochana was creating havoc and the saptamatas were entrusted with the task of killing him they came and they mistakenly killed sage satya katyayana thinking that he was dhumra lochana 
And because they had killed Katyayana, they decided to perform tapas at this particular location. And once they attained salvation, they prayed to Shiva that he should remain here forever. So this is the explanation behind the fact that the Saptamatrikas are just behind the main deity itself. The Linga here is five-faced and the Linga also faces north. The goddess here is called Bala Kuchamba, she of the tender breasts, she of the breasts that have not yet attained full maturity. So Bala Kuchamba, the reason for this is also, there, there is a probable reason for this which I will come to. And you have certain very unique bronze icons in this temple. You have a very beautiful Somaskanda. You have two Natrajas. One Nataraja is this one and then you have a very unusual Nataraja who probably comes from a very early period of the Cholas. So these are the two Nataraja icons in this uh, particular temple. The temple and the river have a very close relationship. It is said that the, uh, the river is actually exactly positioned with relation to the temple like the way the Ganga is in Varanasi to the Vishwanatha Swami temple. It is at the northern side of the shrine and so this temple is also known as Dakshinakasi. And uh, when you read Upper Swamigal or when you read Tirnavakarsar's Tevaram on this particular temple, it's a very moving uh, verse. The first verse speaks about a young girl who is seeing Kadamba Vaneshwarar coming out in procession and does not realize what it is that she is experiencing. But she has very clearly fallen in love with the Lord. But she is too young to know what it is to fall in love. And so somebody else is commenting about her condition. This is what Tirnavakarasa Perman writes as his first verse in the 10 verses that he has dedicated to this particular temple. But even before Tirnavakarsa Perman, in the fifth or the in the fourth or the fifth century, you have Ayyadihal Kadavarkon. Ayyadihal Kadavarkon is the 46th Nayanmar in the 63. A great king who was who was ruling very well and effectively. And then one day he realized that there is no point in continuing doing what I am doing. I have not gone and visited most of the Shiva temples that are in existence. So he crowns his son as the king and he goes away. Of course, these days we crown sons as kings for other reasons, but in those days they were doing it like this. So the verse that Ayyadihal Kadavar Kon writes on this particular temple, Arahu tiri kurambai angadu vittu avi oluhum bodu ariya onna, kaluhu kari tundalaya mun kaviri endra kaviri in tenpar, so before your beautiful body, your life leaves your beautiful urihi. That is, its life is slowly, you know, dissipating away from your body. And eagles and vultures are crowding in on your corpse to eat it up. So before that, when you have time, you pray to Shiva who is in the southern side of the Kaveri. La clearer directions could Rava. So that nobody can have any doubts as to where, what is. So, Kaviri in Tenpar, Kulitandalai, that is the old name for Kulitalai. So, Kulitandalai, now what it really means is a grove in a depression. So, there is obviously a, a part of the land over there which must have been very, very deep. And there must have been a grove of Kadamba Vriksha. The Kadamba Vriksha Thirikara and the Stala Vriksha for this temple is also the Kadamba tree. So this is what he mentions. Ayyadigal Kadavar Kon is very clear in his description about this particular shrine as to where it is and what we need to do. So it is very clearly depicted as a Mukti Stala even in Kadavar Kon's verse. That is before you die, you think, you have time, you pray to this particular temple. So because of that... Connection to Kashi, which will pro which probably came later or pray was there even at his time, we don't know. Kashi is also a Muktisthala. And then there is also the story of a king who came here to, who was going on a Tirtha Yatra with the ashes of his father. When they came to this particular location, they found that the ashes turned into flowers. So the father had attained Mukti at this particular location. So this becomes Dakshina Kashi as a consequence of all that. But as is well known, the Nayanmars, particularly in the, uh, particularly the Tevara mover, they never mention any Sthalapuranam in any temple. They only 
carry on with a great glorified description of Shiva. To them, Shiva is absolute. And all these stories about, you know, Ambal Pooja Pandradu, Madhu Pooja Pandradu, Mayil Pooja Pandradu, all these things appear to be later constructions, which particularly come about in the 15th, 16th and the 17th century when the necessity of a Stala Puranam becomes very important. And then legends are created associated with a particular temple. So neither do we find any references to these things in Ayadi Hal Kadavarkon, nor do we find anything in what Upper, upper Tirunavakar sir has to say. Let me just read to you a couple of verses from Tirunavakar sir's Tevaram and then we will go forward. Tiruchitrambalam and then in Tirukadambanthurai the beginning verses Mutrila Mulayal Ivalagilum Atram Tirkum Arivilal Ahilum Katrai Shinjadayan Kadambanthurai Petram Urdi Endral Yengal Bedaye. Having seen this Kadambanthurai Lord coming out, she kept chanting his name. This girl, Mutrila Mulayal, she has not yet got breasts that have fully matured. So he is talking about a devotee who is in that condition. Later, as we know, in many of the Shiva temples, as we come to realize, the goddesses were never an integral part of worship of Shiva when the time of the Cholas or earlier. The goddess always had a separate temple or a shrine to herself. It is very likely that this temple also was that way, with just a Shiva which these, which uh, Tirunavakarsar and others came and worshipped. Now, the, when the Pandyans and later the Vijayanagar rulers came, they were very ardent worshippers of Devi, so they created a consort for the Lord in most of the temples. And they gave Sanskrit names based on earlier, you know, references to the goddesses. So here, when the first verse itself begins with the word Mutrila Mulai, that became Balakuchamba. And that probably indicates the why the goddess was given that particular name in this particular temple. Upper in his verses, very significantly, in one verse he says, Ariyam Tamilodi Isayanavan. The Lord here is music in Sanskrit and in Tamil. Ariyam Tamilodu Isayanavan. This is one particular description. Another description, Pannin Inmoli Ketkum Paraman. This Lord is listening to the wonderful dragas being rendered to him at this particular shrine. So, Pannin Inmoli Ketkum Paraman. Then he says, Karai Kandan Nilakanta. Now, it is... Very interesting to note that Dikshitar, when he comes to this particular shrine, starts with Nilakantam. Was he aware of this Tevaram? We don't know. But Karai Kantan is a very clear reference to Nilakantha. Of course, it's a very common reference to Shiva. There is nothing unusual about it. But when you read this, you realize that there is some connect between the Tevar, Tevaram and there is a connection here as well. So we will now hear Muthuswami Dikshita's Nila Kantam Bajeham. Before that, I am sorry, we will have the upper Tevaram, the first verse and the last verse. Then we will go to Nila Kantam Bajeham. Nu 
சொல்லால் நன்றா நினை மீங்கள் நோய் கெட நூலா நன்றா நினை மீங்கள் நோய் கெட பாலனை தூடல் ஆடும் பரமனார் நூலால் நன்றா நினை மீங்கள் நோய் கெட பாலனை தூடன் ஆடும் பரமனார் காலால் ஊன்று கந்தான் கடம்பல் தூரை மேலால் நான் செய்த வல்வினை வீடுமே காலால் ஊன்று கந்தான் கடம்பல் தூரை மேலால் நான் செய்த வல்வினை வீடுமே மேலால் நான் செய்த வல்வினை வீடுமே all of most of upper stevarams the padigams the last verse invariably carries a reference to ravana so uh, the almost all the padigams the last verse will speak about shiva so he always in the last uh, in the last verse which uh, vivek just sang the lord over here is forever to be meditated upon meditated upon and he is forever delighting in being anointed with the five products of the cow which is milk curd butter ghee and the cow's urine panchagavyam ad anji seethu avarku abhishekam pannano kaalal oondru ugandan kadamban thurai melal naam seida valvinai veedume when we pray to he who by pressing someone down and then blessing him that is he pressed ravana with his feet uh, with his foot and then he blesses ravana similarly he will bless us so ad apdiye and the comparison melal naam seida valvinai veedume whatever we have done earlier everything will go because of the way he will release the pressure on us adhe madri and the oru connection oda he finishes so when we now we look at muthuswami dikshitar's neelakantham bajeham in the raga kedara gaula and let us see what dikshitar has to say about the deity நீலகண்டம் பஜேகம் சதம் நீரஜாசனோதம் நீலகண்டம் பஜேகம் சதம் நீரஜாசனோதம் நீலகண் ஜேகூச்சாம்பாசம்பாச்சாம்பாசம் பாலூச்சாம்பாசம் பாலச்சந்திரேவிதம் பாலூச்சாம்பாசம் பாலச்சந்திரேவிதீலகுருகூஜிதம் ஸ்ரீகம்பவனம் ஸீலகுருகூஜிதம் ஸ்ரீகம்பவனம் நீலகண்டம் பஜேகம் சதம் நீரஜாசனோதம் நீலகண்டம் பஜேகம் சதம் அக்ஷயூப்பண்டீர ஊத்தராமுகம் அக்ஷயூப்பண்டீர ஊத்தராமுகம் 
पंचमुखम रक्षित भक्त प्रमुखम अक्षय रूप खंड कवेरीतीर उतराभिमुखम पंचमुखम रक्षित भक्त प्रमुखम नक्षत्रेश शेखर नक्षत्रेश शेखर नाम रूप विचित्रधर दक्षतरमीश्वर केदार गौल प्रियक नक्षत्रेश शेखर नाम रूप विचित्रधर दक्षतरमीश्वर केदार गौल प्रियक दक्षिण काशीपुर दक्षिण काशीपुर दंडित कामिपुर दक्षिण काशीपुर दंडित कामिपुर दक्षर हर हर दयाक कमल दक्षिण काशीपुर दंडित कामिपुर दक्षर हर हर दयाक कमल नीलकंठ भजे हम सतत नीरजासना दिनोत नीलकंठ भजे हम सतत The opening line says Nira Jasana Adinutam. The Stala Puranam says that Brahma came and worshipped here and attained salvation. And when he did, he requested Shiva to stay back. In interestingly, the Kriti does not mention the Saptamatrika episode at all, but it mentions Nira Jasana Adinutam, which is also one of the Stala Puranam aspects over here. It talks about Dakshina Kashi Puram. It says Uttara Abhimukam. Panchamukham, because this is a five mukha linga which is facing the north. All these aspects are brought about in the composition in classic Dikshita style. One of the very uh, interesting aspects of this is that we know chronologically that Nilakantham Bajeham and Pahimam Ratnachala Nayaka were composed towards the end of Muthuswami Dikshita's life because he had finished his sojourn everywhere and then he was on his way to Etayapuram, when he went to Tirichi, then he went to Madurai. So these are all the compositions that are coming in what can only be described as a fully mature phase of a great composer. And uh, while Nilakantam Bajeham itself is a wonderful composition, he rises to greater heights, in my opinion, in Pahimam, Ratna Chalanayaka, in every way, whether it comes to the lyric, in terms of prosody, in terms of the music, everything. There is nothing that can be said about such an immaculate composition. But what is very interesting is that this Kadambar Kovil also appears to have had a lot of Tamil verses dedicated to it. And uh, Uve Swaminathayar, had it not been for him, we would have never known about the wealth. We, we, we would not have known much about Tamil. Tamil Tamil but uh, where I but the point is that without Swaminathayar, we would not have you know retrieved much of our Tamil wealth. And in that, among the many things that Uwe Swaminathayar retrieved is a Kadambar Ula. It's a work that was done sometime. He himself writes that it was probably done in the 17th century. There is a website called saivam.org. If you go there, you will find the entire Kadambar Ula. As all the Thevarams are also given over there, the Kadambar Ula text is there fully in Tamil. And it's a fascinating work. It, it was composed on the occasion when a new temple chariot was made for this particular shrine by a Sharavana Mudaliyar, who was a 17th century employee of the Nawabs of Arcot. Swaminathayar says that Sharavana Mudaliyar himself was a descendant 
of a manika vachaka tamburan who tambiran who was a member of the tiruvavadurai mat and he says that there is a statue to manika vachaka tambiran in this particular temple i was not able to identify it he says that that person was involved in collecting a lot of funds for the restoration of this particular shrine and his descendant was the saravana mudaliyar who created a new chariot sometime in the 17th century and this ula was written to coincide with that the ula itself is a is the it probably establishes a connectivity with upper because of this mutrila mulai the ula itself is composed in the same way there are three women who are watching the procession there is one who is a young child who has fallen in love with the deity there is a middle there is a young lady who knows what the facts of life are but has not yet and come to full ripening of wisdom and then there is a third lady who is a fully wizened lady who understands everything about life and how it is all impermanent and finally we all have to merge with the lord so the ula is composed as a description of a conversation between these three and it also is a fascinating description of the temple procession itself coming out in that chariot so every aspect of that procession is described the ringing of the bells the pla- the, play- the playing of the cymbals the deity is being brought to the chariot the deity is being placed on the chariot and then all the other temple deities who are in this particular vicinity they all come to witness this particular procession then the dragging of the chariot itself rolling out and when it comes out it is so beautiful and grand that it is pressing the earth with its power and the old chariot is watching with unconcealed jealousy from a corner because it has been relegated to a different place altogether and then the vadyangal the musical instruments that are playing takkai udukai tadari tavil beri urumikka mulanga virundarpa mikka doni mattalang kaithala oli mari mulanga oli pol tattalangena பாதம் சாதிப்ப எந்திசையும் துரும்பு வீணை சுரமண்டலம் பாடற்றரும்பு நாதன் தனி இசைப்ப ஸோ இட் கோஸ் ஆன் லைக் திஸ் இட் டிஸ்கிரைப்ஸ் இட் இட் டாக்ஸ் அபவுட் தக்கை உடுக்கை தடாரி தவில் பேரி இட் டாக்ஸ் அபவுட் மத்தளம் தாள ஒலி கைத்தாளம் தட் இஸ் பீப்புள் ஆர் பீட்டிங் அண்ட் கீப்பிங் டைம் தென் இட் டாக்ஸ் அபவுட் துரும்பு வீணை ஸ்வரமண்டலம் அண்ட் ஸோ ஆன் இட் கண்டினியூஸ் லைக் திஸ் அண்ட் இட் கோஸ் ஆன் ஃபார் செவரல் பேஜஸ் டு ஜஸ்ட் டிஸ்கிரைப் தி கடம்பர் உலா the beauty of this particular procession so this is kulithalai having you know we have worshiped over here the also we must remember he talks about sila guru guha pujitam yeah. in this particular composition this particular shrine has also got tirupugal by arunagirinathar and the legend here is that subramanya swami he overheard parvati being given the pranava mantra by shiva and because he overheard it he was struck dumb and he came here and meditated on the lord and regained his speech so that particular episode is probably mentioned in the beauty of dikshitar is he'll take a whole story and then condense it into one line and give it to us as a reference so that we can go back and think about it later and you know work out what he really meant so probably he was talking about it so now we come to the second shrine which is this ayyar malai or ratnagiri or tiruvat poki to give it its various names and uh, the temple itself is 1000 feet in height 1178 feet in height and you have around 1000 steps that go up to the top of the to the top where the temple is the temple is worshiped only once a day in the afternoon and it has always been like this it is not as though it had trikala puja and then uh, you know it whittled down nothing like that the temple has always had worship only in the afternoon the surrounding it is a very small village and in that village you have a very unique community of chettiars known as panniru chettimar the story is that this community they were 11 of them and they came here to divide their profits every time they divided it they found that it was coming as 1/12th and not 1/11th so they realized that shiva should be made a partner in the deal and therefore <laughs> they become panniru chettimar and they have created rest houses and all over here the other very interesting thing in the, about this village is the swami here is called ratnachala nayaka and therefore all males born of the lineage of this village will have the name ratnam 
appended to their names in some way or the other. Without the word Ratnam, they will not, they will, that is Kupat repair Veradarkla, but the name that is given to them will have an, a, a, prefix, a suffix of Ratnam because of the association with this temple. Now, having seen the Panir Chetimar, this is the daunting spectacle that greets you. You have to now start climbing and going up this particular uh, temple. Vidya Nagarajan did not know that we were going up to a temple till she came to the base of the hill. Till that time, we had kept it as a secret from her. And she said, a fear of heights, this, that and sundry, but we forced her to climb along with us. There is somebody else in the audience who after climbing up said that she had arrhythmia of the heart. We got arrhythmia after we heard this. So, this is, you, you start climbing up from here. And you know, able-bodied people, we have no reason to be feel daunted because you will find elderly, very young, everybody climbing up. They also, because this is a prarthana stalam, they have this motayadra there. Then they also light a camphor for every step and they climb up. They will light a camphor, they will do a namaskaram. Next step they will light camphor, they will do namaskaram. Like this they will climb up. There are all kinds of daunting uh, exercises that people undertake by way of expiation and prayer and all that. Compared to that, nothing. But the whole temple is considered, the whole hill is considered to be Shiva. So you cannot climb up with slippers. You have to walk barefoot. That is compulsory over here. So, in the old days, it must have been very tough because this part of the world gets baking hot by summer and during the day particularly. But now, in order to make things easier, they have created a covered passageway that goes from the top base right up to the top and it is very easy to climb up without feeling the heat on your feet. And here we have, this is the way it goes up and every once in a while you have these platforms where you can rest and then you can continue your climb. If you don't feel like climbing up, you have the Dholi service. The Dholi service is for able-bodied men with an easy chair on mounted on poles and you can sit on it you, the, and then you climb up. The only problem is they are climbing up while you are facing down. And you are lifted up at right angles because two men are one, two steps ahead and two men are two steps below. So you are forever peering into the abyss. And the other thing is that this whole cane chair contraption on those bamboos, it's not very firmly tied or anything like that. So you are shaken and jolted and pushed here and there all over by the time. So there were a few people who were brave enough to try this and they came up by that means also. Now the other companions, mm -hmm. they will ensure that you climb up empty-handed and when you come back also, you come back empty-handed. They will snatch everything from your hands, anything that is given by the priest, anything that you were wanting to take up there. They, and it is said that they don't trouble the locals, they only trouble the outsiders. I have no idea. Maybe they are like our auto rickshaw people or whatever. But whatever it is, the, the, the monkeys are a, you know, they are a very interesting part of the climb, so to speak. Right on the way, as you go up the new steps, you will find an older pathway running parallel to you and probably this was the pathway that Tirnavakar sir and Muthuswami Dikshitar and others must have taken. In those days, there would have been no shelter at the top. Everything would have had to be carried up there and they would have, Dikshitar imagined with his Vinay, Tirnavakar sir imagined with his pronounced limp and going up with his Uravara Padai at an old age climbing all the way up to the top, they have all done it. So, this, what is expected of us is nothing much. And suddenly you will find these scenic views of the village and the temple tank down below, huge rocks, craggy rocks and another view of the same village. Climbing up like this, you then come under a great rock, you will find the Saptamatrikas along with Ganesha, keeping watch over them. The same legend that is there in the Kadambar Kovil also is here. That Shiva, you know, gave salvation to the Saptamatrikas and they were worshipped over here. The other legend is that there was a great competition between Adi Sesha and Vayu as to who was more powerful. And Adi Sesha held the Meru Malay very tightly in his coils and Vayu tried to blow the Meru Malay in the struggle. Five peaks from Meru 
were blown away and they fell at various places. So in Thiruvannamalai, the coral fell, the ruby fell in Ratnagiri, the sapphire fell, uh, fell in um, uh, Kodumudi, if I am not mistaken, and so on. So there are a couple of, and then the emerald fell at Yathiri Ingoi Malai, and so on. So there are five of them, I forget which is the fifth location. So each one of them falls at a particular point and wherever they fall, there is a temple that comes up to the Lord. So this is the other legend that is associated with this. There is no formal entrance Gopuram and all that. The, whoever built it, the Nayak rulers who expanded this temple, they made do with whatever was available. So when you go here, you find just a square entrance. And if you thought we went alone, just look at the crowd that was coming up on that particular day. Everybody climbing up to offer their prayers to the Lord. And then you come to Aralakeshi's shrine. Aralakeshi is like Bala Kuchamba. She is four-armed and with the most beatific smile possible. Once you have seen that smile, Mona Lisa and all is nothing. There is something sinister about Mona Lisa's leer, if you ask me. But here this goddess with her welcoming smile and, you know, standing tall, impressive and waiting for all the devotees to come. Then a short climb up, one more passageway with Gandharvas carved on the top and finally a fortress-like wall and you reach the sanctum. The sanctum itself is just one central hall with one surrounding passageway going all around it. The Sivalinga here is very tall. And it has got a prominent slope on one side of it. And that is considered to be a scar that is there on top of the Sivalinga. Next to it, there is a deity called uh, Vairaswami. He is the companion to the Lord. It is said that there was a great devotee of Shiva who felt that Shiva was so lonely on top of the hill that he decided to cut his head and offer himself as a Bhutagana who will keep company with the Lord on top in that temple. So his feet are worshipped in a shrine at the base and the head is worshipped as Vairaswami on top of the temple at the right at the top. So the Lord here, as I said, is worshipped only once a day. All the time the monkeys will be watching you to see you see what you are doing while you are praying. <laughs> Who is getting a coconut? Who has got the varaparam? <laughs> and then they will be there just as you are coming out and they will be taking it away from you. So this particular deity... This is all of us, when we finally reach the top, you can see we are all smiling, very happy. None of them knew that Tiri Ingui Malay is next day. <laughs> now, when you are climbing up, you will see this particular site. You will find a man carrying a pot of water on his head and on the pot, there is a carving of a crow. The, 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 this is one particular family which has been doing this particular service to Shiva for several generations. They go every day to the Kaveri, which is 8 kilometers away. And that they do by bike or whatever it is. There they go and they fill the pot of water. They walk back. Then they climb up these thousand steps. And on top, there is a huge Gangalam, which is kept next to Shiva. They empty the water into it. And only that water is used for the Abhishekam of the Lord. Every day it is done. The legend is that there was an Arya Raja who lost his crown and he came in search of it and he came to this particular location and there was an aged man who told him that on top of this shrine there is a on top of this hill there is a shiva temple if you fill the kangalam that is next to shiva with water from the kaveri you will get back your crown so the king takes makes that trek he goes and he brings water repeatedly but no matter how many times he does this the kangalam just doesn't get filled Finally, he loses his temper and he decides to cut the old man's head and lifts his sword when Shiva manifests himself, himself and bears the brunt of the sword on his head. There is a scar that, and the king is granted salvation. The king then prays that his descendant should be forever interested with this duty. And this duty is followed even today without fail. The pot with the crow on, in, uh, carved on it, the legend is that a crow once upset this pot of water and Lord Shiva burnt it to ashes, which is why the crow is carved on the pot. But if you And they all say that the crow never flies over this particular hill. But logically, if you look at it, the hill is of a particular height, which is above the flying level of a crow. The crow is never likely to uh, fly over it. The other thing is that every night they leave behind puja articles when they come down every afternoon after the worship is over. 
because they believe that Indra comes in the form of thunder each night and worships the Lord. This place is frequently struck by lightning because of its height. And therefore, that legend also appears to have gained currency over here. This is the distant view of the Kaveri. It's a very bad photograph. It was very smoggy when I went and you can make out there's a blue band in the distance. That is the distance that this Arya Raja family has to travel every day and then come back bearing the pot of water. They are all wiry and thin because of the amount of exercise that they are doing. And the balance that they have with that pot on their head is just, they just run. They run up the steps. And you feel so jealous when you watch them. You tell, you, how do they manage to do it? But they are doing it every day. From there, you have a distant view of the Thiri Ingo Himalay, which is the third hill. But before we go to that particular hill, let us look at what the greats gave us in terms of uh, you know, the verses that they have left behind on various shrines, on this particular shrine. The whole of Upper is the one who has left behind 10 verses on this particular shrine. And all the 10 verses are very similar to Shankara's Subramanya Bhujangam's ending verses. This Kritantasya Duteshu Chandeshu Kopad Daha Chindi Bhindi Timam Tarjaya. So that is when the Yamadutas are all coming to take me away. What is the, at that point of time you have to save me. So all the 10 verses are like that. Kala Pasam Piditeri Duduvar. Balagar, Viridhar, Parayar, Yanar. That is when the Yama's devote uh, attendants come, they are not going to take sympathy on whether the person is old or young or, you know, a child or whatever it is. Ala Nidal Amaranda Vatpokiyar, Sheila Marandavar, Shemmayul Nirpare. Those who have maintained this Vatpokiyar in their hearts, that Vatpokiyar who is under the banyan tree as Dakshina Murti. They will never have to face this kind of trouble. This is the broad theme of all the ten verses. Now the explanation for Vat Poki, the name Vat Poki is given as in the Raja Oda Vadavandi because he deflected the sword. So it is called Vat Poki. But in Upper, he gives a very interesting one reference at the end. He says, Vatam Pokum. Vatam is fatigue. When you have climbed 1178 steps, the most important emotion that you will be feeling is Vatam. But when you see the Lord, you don't realize anything of what you did to climb up. So probably that was an explanation for this name, Vatpoki. Vatam Poki Natanala, Vatpoki Arkala. And Ratnagiri is because of those five gems that fell off and the Lord here being one Ratnachala Nayaka because he is ruby. So that is why he is also called Ratnachala Nayaka. This is our, uh, this is upper. Now, Muthuswami Dikshitar composes Pahimam Ratnachala Nayaka in Mukhari. I will ask, I will request Vivek to sing it now and then we will proceed with the rest of the talk. Pahimam Ratnachala Nayaka Pahimam Ratna Chala Nayaka Pahimam Ratna Chala Nayaka भक्त जन शुभ प्रदाय Oh. 
ಶಜಾತ ತೂರ್ಯಜಾತಿ ಹೃದ ಖಂಡ ಕಾವೇರಿ ನ್ಯೋದ ಕಾಭಿಷಿಕ್ತ ಶರೀರ ನಾದಿ ಗುರು ಗುಹ ಕುಮಾರ ಮಾರ ಹರ ಅದ್ಯ ಪ್ಯಾರ್ಯ ವಂಶಜಾತ ತೂರ್ಯಜಾತಿ ಹೃದ ಖಂಡ ಕಾವೇರಿ ನ ಜ್ಯೋದ ಕಾಭಿಷಿಕ್ತ ಶರೀರ ನಾದಿ ಗುರು ಗುಹ ಕುಮಾರ ಮಾರ ಹರ ಪಾಹಿ ಮಾ ರತ್ನ ಚಲ ನಾಯಕ ಭಕ್ತ ಜನ ಶುಭ ಪ್ರದಾಯಕ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಈಸ್ ದಟ್ ಕಿಂಗ್ ಶಹಾಜಿ who lived probably a hundred years before Muthu Swami Dikshitar, also composed a song on Ratnagiri Shwara and he has also set it in Raga Mukhari. Whether Dikshitar knew of that composition and that is why he was inspired to use the same Raga, we don't know. But it is a wonderful composition indeed. Pahi Maam Ratna Chalanayaka Bhakta Jana Shubha Pradayaka The Lord who gives auspiciousness or fortune to people that ratnachala nayaka may he protect me mohaja arala kesi varadhava that arala kesi that she whose tresses are so fragrant that the bees are coming and swarming around her so arala kesi mohaja that is she creates moha this this world of illusion is created by her he is the beloved of that mukti prada immediately after having said mohaja arala mohaja arala kesi varadhava the next line is mukti prada so having created the world of illusion giving salvation also nata virinchi madhava rohinisha nata virinchi madhava is nothing but worship by brahma and vishnu rohinisha ravi vanni nayana the three eyes are chandra surya and agni bhava roga hara bhava roga hara nipuna nipuna tara charana shiva so he who is an expert in destroying the ills of this particular world and then sadyo jatadi pancha mukha the five faces sadyo jatam tatpurusham ishanam agoram and vamadeva so sadyo jatadi pancha mukha ari shadvarga rahita that mukhari comes in that particular point this man was the original crossword specialist so you know mukha ari shadvarga rahita so the six enemies kama krodha lobha moha madha matsarya these three these six enemies he is without that then he talks about avidyodaya viyadadi uh, the that the five elements which are created out of ignorance forever meditating on that as dakshina murti he is forever you know creating he is in he uh, is thinking about it all the time shiva is forever meditating and at that point of time this world of this these five elements which is created out of illusion then vidyatmaka shri chakra kara why shri chakra kara over here the whole hill is considered to be shri chakra in this and dikshitar was a great worshipper of the you know of uh, shri chakra and you will also notice that he goes to temples where the shri chakra worship is highly extolled like for instance mannar gudi where the lord is shri vidya rajagopala swami and then kamalamba the uh, mangalambike then the uh, the go- there are various places where you will find that there are particular allusions to the shri chakra and he has made it a point of visiting many of those locations now here there are eight tops to this particular hill and then the ninth peak is supposed to be the shivalinga itself so chaturbihi shri kantaihi shiva yuvati bihi panchabirapi that is the four peaks of the goddess and then of the lord and the five of the of the goddess together forming the nine peaks which make up the as adi shankara himself describes it so here there are nine peaks and so that is why this entire hill is supposed to be shri chakra 
and vichitra navaratnagiri vihara of course when he says vichitra it is very unusual in shape structure the rocks and everything over here then gadyanuvida padyadi vinuta that is extolled in prose as well as in poetry so there is as i said already there is upper and then there is arunagiri nathar who has come over here and endowed it with a tirupugal shahaji has composed a composition dikshitar has done pahima amritna chala nayaka much later we will find that meenakshi sundaram pillai the teacher of uve swaminatha iyer was invited to this particular temple and he was asked to create what was called a kalambakam kalambakam on this particular temple it's a form of verse and one of the verses swaminatha iyer mentions in his meenakshi sundara pillai avargalin charitram he says that the guru meditated thought about what he should write and then one particular verse is really beautiful it says on your back you bear the scar of the pandian king because we see maran pirambal madurai maran pirambal aditha and the having taken the on your back you've got the scar of the pandian king on your chest you've got the scar of the goddess because in kanchipuram when the flood comes to destroy the shivalingam the goddess presses the shivalingam so tightly that the impress of her breast is left on the shivalingam itself on your head you've got the scar of this arya raja who came and hit you the only place where you don't have any scars are your feet come and place them on my hard heart and you will be fulfilled with that desire also so this is what minakshi sundaram pillai writes this is very similar to our uh, apaya dikshita right the maula ganga sashanka you know everything is cold about you if you ever want some warmth you come to my heart where you know forever all my desires are creating so much of stomach burn and churn and things like that you will find enough heat to keep you comfortable so it's very similar to that so the verses it's clear that it did not end with dikshitar minakshi sundaram pillai would come create the kalambakam there are other verses on this particular shrine so there is a long tradition and then finally we come to adhyapyarya vamsajata turiya jati bhrita akanda kaveri nadyodaka abhishikta sharira anadi guruguha kumara marahara so adhyapyar even now he is saying in his time and even now it is happening in our time that the arya jata arya vamsha jata that those people who were born of that arya raja they are going and collecting the water of the akhanda kaveri and that is what is being used for your anointment so dikshitar has mentioned that also in his composition so when you go there there is a great sense of fulfillment that you see first of all a continuity of tradition which is what makes our country so great you know that something that ha- like kapaleshwara temple what up gnana samandar saw the temple festivals that samandar was saw in the 7th century we are still seeing so this is the great joy that we experience when we go to these places and you find dikshitar has written this line i am also seeing the same thing so what a great tradition that has continued over the years now this temple is not easy as i said and the temple festivals happen very helpfully in the height of summer in the month of may so everything will be blazing hot ratnagiri itself will be blazing hot and they bring all the utsava murtis down this particular hill then there is a huge vahana mandapam in front it's a very one horse village then we had a friend who came from that village so we approached them and they fixed up the temple free priest to you know for a payment they offered us lunch and we can never forget the lunch that was given in that chaul tree which i the photograph of which i showed you at the bottom of the hill but it is worth a visit then from here we go to the third temple which is tiri ingoi malai ingoi malai is also known as maragata chalam because the emerald is supposed to have fallen in that particular so the three are connected so sapta matrika legend connects the kulitalai and tiruvat poki the vayu adi adisesha conflict connects tiruvat poki and tiri ingoi malai so the lord here is known as maragata chaleshwara but when you go there you realize it is so green it is lush this particular hill unlike tiruvat poki which is just bare this one is completely green from top from top to bottom and so you realize that maragata chalam is not a entirely erroneous name for this lord he is completely covered in greenery there are only 500 steps to be climbed over here not 1000 and odd but the problem is that there is no covering so you walk up so why they said evening is very clear because by then the sun had set and you could go up and come down now we were stupid we didn't know 
So we went in the, at 10 o'clock after breakfast. By the time we came back, <laughs> you know, no slippers once again. Slippers had been left far behind. We needed able-bodied musician to go down <laughs> and collect slippers. <laughs> and then when nobody was looking, we wore those shoes <laughs> and came down ourselves. We couldn't do anything else. We couldn't take a step further. It was like a furnace. It was like a brick kiln or some such thing. Climbing up was tough, but climbing down was impossible. Mukti hange vandru kumonu oru doubt. So this Thiri Ingoi Malai, Thiruvat Poki is a metropolis in comparison to Thiri Ingoi Malai. There is nothing, nothing. There is a tiny, very, very tiny hamlet of a village. Even that famous Doli service, you have to call them from Thiruvat Poki and book them one day in advance and say, Nale ki ninge Thiri Ingoi Malai go. So even Doli service is only provided from Thiruvat Poki. Ingoi Malai does not even have that. So the legend is that Agastya came here by the time he came, the temple had closed on top of the hill. He changed himself into a fly and flew up and went and had darshan and came down again. That's the Ingoi Malai. He is the Our portly man, you know, Agastya, who climbing up would have been tough. Sometimes you wish you also became a fly and you flew up that distance and you had that darshan on top. Climbing up, as I said, was quite arduous. And we had the same doli going up. Some of us who are faster looking down in contempt at others who are coming down. When you go there, there is nobody in this temple. Nobody. This temple could practically be abandoned for all practical, for all purposes. There is no Utsava Murti. Utsava Murti, they say, has been kept somewhere very safely. Hopefully, it is, it is not kept safely in a museum in America or in a high society collector's house in Alvar Pet or some such thing. So it is somewhere, <laughs> it's a, hopefully it's in some government locker and you know it is brought out on particular occasions. There's not a soul in this particular temple. And the Lord here, they say the Linga has a greenish hue. We couldn't make that out when we went. It's full of the most spectacular views of the surrounding area. This is the sanctum itself and then this is the view of Thiruvat Poki from Thiruingoy Malay. So when you look out of a window, you are able to see Thiruvat Poki in the distance. There is a beautiful Nartana Ganesha. This is Shiva over here. And then you have got the goddess who is known as Maragatambike over here. This is the view of the village itself uh, surrounding it. What is very uh, fascinating about this particular location or this locale is the fact that when Samandar comes here, he was equally impressed with the natural beauty of the place so many centuries ago. With the same natural beauty that we pause to ponder over when we go to this particular location, Samandar also very clearly was impressed by it. And I'll read out a couple of verses before we ask Vivek to sing it and then sing the other composition also. Vanathuyar tan madithoi shadai mel matta malar shudi tenotthana men muri maan viriyal devi baha maha Kanathi iravil yeri kondadum kadavul ula heta yena tiral vandi idium saral ingoi malayare. This ingoi malay, of course, the first half is vana tuyartan maditoi sadaimel, that is, the cool moon is on top of his locks, and he has got the umatha flower on his hair, and he has got one part of his body, this lady who has got eyes like a doe and who has got speech like honey. And he dances in the night in the funeral ground. He resides in Ingoi Malay where the wild boar comes and relaxes in the beautiful greenery that is surrounding this place. Now this is the first verse. The second verse, similar description, the final line. Yela todu nal ilangamu ilang ilavam kamarum Ingoi Malayare. So here you have got cloves and you have got... Lavangam and Yelam, both these are cardamom and cloves, they are in this particular location and they are, you know, fragrant, they make this entire place so fragrant. Then, Yenghum Ariyum Tiriyum Saral Ingoi Malayare, where the wild bear and the lion goes around this particular location, that particular place is this Ingoi Malay. Iraivar Shirai Vandu Arai Poonjaral Ingoi Malayare, here the bees are perpetually entrapped in the flowers in that particular location. Then, 
Yendam Madihel Kadikol Charal Ingoi Malayare. Here, what is happening is that the full of the dancing feet of the Lord and the fragrant trees that are surrounding him at all these locations. And similarly, you have got all the verses describe the natural beauty of this place and it is exactly the same when we go there. So here, Upper has not composed. It is only Samandar who has composed over here. There is no Thirupugai by Arunagirinathar on this particular temple. There is also a composition by attributed to Muthuswami Dekshitar in the Raga Vasanta, which is Marakata Lingam Chintayeham. There are conflicting opinions about the veracity of this composition. For one, it is not in the Sangeeta Sampradaya Pradarshini, which was composed by, which was written by Muthuswami Dikshitar's grand nephew, Subhrama Dikshitar. Of course, there is a view of, point of view that it is not necessary for a Dikshitar composition to be, you know, uh, a fake one if it is outside of the Sangeeta Sampradaya Pradarshini, because that only gives you a small collection of what is outside, what is a greater corpus. What is, however, interesting is that this particular composition has certain unresolvable conflicts with the location itself. For instance, it gives the name of the goddess as Manikyavalli, whereas here it is Maragadambike. And then it also says Maha Vilvavanam. There is no Vilvavanam or even the Stalap tree here that is a tamarind tree. So there is no reference to Vilvavanam. But today we attribute this composition to this particular location. So let us listen to that and then we first start with Samandar Stevaram and then we go to the composition of the Ikshita. Tanmadito Sadai Mel Mate Malar Shudi Vanatu Yer Tanmadito Sadai Mel Mate Malar Shudi Teno Tanamya Moriman Virial Devi Pagam கானத்திரவில் எரிகுண்டாடும் கடவுள் உலகத்தே எனத்திரல் வந்திழியும் சாரல் இங்கோய் மலையாரே எனத்திரல் வந்து இழியும் சாரல் இங்கோய் மலையாரே இங்கோய் மலையாரே ஏனத்திரல் வந்து இழியும் சாரல் இங்கோய் மலையாரே விழவாருளியும் உழவும் ஓவ வேணு புரம் தன்னுள் விழவாருளியும் உழவும் ஓவ வேணு புரம் தன்னுள் அழலார் வண்ணத்தடிகள் அருள்சே அணிகொள் சம்பந்தன் விழவாருளியும் உழவும் ஓவ வேணு புரம் தன்னுள் அழலார் வண்ணத்தடிகள் அருள்சே அணிகொள் சம்பந்தன் எழிலார் சுனையும் பொழிலும் புடைச்சூர் ஈங்கோய் மலையேசன் எழிலார் சுனையும் பொழிலும் புடைச்சூர் ஈங்கோய் மலையேசன் கழல் சேர் பாடல் பத்தும் வள்ளார் கவலை களை வாரே கழல் சேர் பாடல் பத்தும் வள்ளார் கவலை களை வாரே கவலை களை வாரே மரகதலிங்கம் சிந்தையேகம் மரகதலிங்கம் சிந்தையேகம் 
മാണിക്യവല്യം ബാസമേതം മരഗതലിംഗം ചിന്തയേഹം മാണിക്യവല്യം ബാസമേതം മരഗതലിംഗം ചിന്തയേ ഗൗരീ വല്ലഭ ഗണേശ സന്നുതം ഗൗരീ വല്ലഭ ഗണേശ സന്നുതം ഗുരു ഗുഹ പൂജിത വൃഷാരോഹിതം ഗൗരീ വല്ലഭ ഗണേശ സന്നുതം ഗുരു ഗുഹ പൂജിത വൃഷാരോഹിതം മരഗതലിംഗം ചിന്തയേ മഹാബിൽവന മധ്യ വിഹാരം മഹാബിൽവന മധ്യ വിഹാരം മാലാകപാലശൂലാധിധരോ മഹാബിൽവന മധ്യ വിഹാരം മാലാകപാല ശൂലാധിധരം മഹനീയ സാമ്രാജ്യാതിപ്രദം മഹനീയ സാമ്രാജ്യാതിപ്രദം മാനിത വൈശ്രവണാധിവരതം മഹനീയ സാമ്രാജ്യാതിപ്രദം മാനിത വൈശ്രവണാധിവരതം മാനിത മഗ മഗരിസ നിധനിസ മഗ മത മനിത മഗ മാനിത മഗ മഗരിസ നിധനിസ മഗ മത മനിത മഗ മത മത നിത നിത നിസരിസ നിസ മഗരിസ നിഗരിസ നിത മനിത മഗ മരഗതലിംഗം ചിന്തയേഹം മാണിക്യവല്യം ബാസമേതം മരഗതലിംഗം ചിന്തയേഹം when i read samandar many years ago for this particular temple i was stunned that he said in the last line vijavar oliyum mulavum ova venu puran thanul then i what he is talking about the great festivals and the sound of the instruments then i realized that he is not referring to this temple he is saying samandan who comes from venu puram which is sirhali where the festivals and all the noise and music happens incessantly and then he says எழிலார் சுனையும் பொழிலும் புடைசூழ் இங்கோய் மலையீசன் ஹி டஸ் நாட் சே தீஸ் நாய்ஸஸ் ஹேப்பன் ஹியர் ஹி சேஸ் திஸ் பர்டிகுலர் டெம்பிள் இஸ் நோன் ஃபார் த பியூட்டிஃபுல் ரிவர் அண்ட் ஃபார் த நேச்சுரல் பியூட்டி தட் சரவுண்ட்ஸ் இட் ஸோ இட் ரிமைன்ஸ் வெரி ஃபெய்த்ஃபுல் டு தட் இன் த நைன்டீன் தேர்ட்டிஸ் டாக்டர் டி எஸ் எஸ் ராஜன் ஹூ வாஸ் அ வெரி வெல் நோன் ஃப்ரீடம் ஃபைட்டர் தே சே சவுந்தர ராஜன் ஹூ வாஸ் ஒன் ஆஃப் தி ஃபர்ஸ்ட் பீப்புள் ஃப்ரம் திருச்சிராப்பள்ளி டு குவாலிஃபை ஆஸ் அ சர்ஜன் to go abroad come back suffer social ostracization because of that then joining the congress becomes a freedom fighter in the 1930s he becomes a member of raja ji's cabinet in uh, as minister over here and then when the cabinet resigns in 1939 following the second world war tss rajan is at a bit of a loose end he goes back to trichy and then he buys land in uh, tri ingoi malai to start a model farm and he says that the farming profession was so looked down upon that even the devadasis of the village spat on him when he came there they did not consider him to be of any worth whatsoever and he says very interestingly that this particular temple had it had certain interesting statistics which he reels out in that in his biography he says the base of the hill is 300 acres the area of the river that is attributed to the particular village is 300 acres and the farm lands that belong to the temple were 300 acres 
And he says even in the 1930s, the Lord was not getting one rupee out of those 300 acres. I don't think the Lord gets anything better today. But it is still a temple that is worth going and visiting. It is, uh, it is, if you want to be by yourself and if you want to meditate on the Lord when he is by himself untroubled by others, then I would suggest that Tiringo Malay is the place to go to. It is a place of stunning natural beauty because while in Thiruvat Poki and Kulitalai, you can actually go to the temple and come away without seeing the river. Here you cannot miss the river at all because the river winds around the hill. And when you go to the hill, you've got the river on one side and you've got the hill on the other. You cannot miss the river at all. It is so very beautiful as a location. There has been talk for a very long time to bring a covered passageway to Thiri Ingo Himalai that has not happened. But what is even worse is there has been a talk for creating a winch to go up to Thiruvat Poki. I hope it doesn't happen anytime because that place will just lose its character if we have everybody and anybody. I'm, I'm all for inclusion. I'm not saying that. But you know exactly what happens when a temple gets crowded. And that is what will happen if a wind service is established to Thiruvat Poki. It has not yet moved. The files are still in a state of deep slumber. So they will, hopefully they will not move. But before they move, I suggest that those of you who want to make it, you should go and visit these three temples. Certainly, they represent a very unique triad in our long list of great shrines. And what makes them even more interesting is the wealth of literature and music that is there in them to extol the Lord. I thank Vivek for having been so readily accepted this. It just speaks volumes of his passion for the compositions. And uh, very nice of you because I just three days ago, I suddenly woke up and realized that I hadn't thought of a musician. Then I remembered Vivek had come and he would know all the compositions. So you were my first port of call. It's absolutely and my good fortune. Thanks a lot. <laughs> thank you. And I thank Vani Mahal once again for having invited me to give this talk. Thank you all. See you. So that was a very splendid talk by Sri Ram. He never fails. Thank you. <laughs> I particularly thank him. In this year, he had almost given up uh, giving us a program because of paucity of time. But in the last minute, he himself volunteered to do it. And I thank him once again. And I request him to keep it up in the coming years also. We thank uh, Vivek Sadashivam for the wonderful renditions of the Jeechadar compositions and the Tevaram. Thank you very much. <laughs>